For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. Now, I'm turning my passion into a profession by seeking out old, beat-up guitars and giving them new life, all while trying to make a profit. I'll be searching everywhere for used gear that I can refret, rewire, repaint, whatever it takes to make it a real shredder. This is Trash to Thrash. For thousands of years, Japan has been responsible for some of the highest quality, handcrafted, man-made goods. Going back to samurai swords, culinary utensils, and paintings, they're some of the most uniquely designed and well-crafted pieces. And it's the same with guitars. Japanese guitars are truly art, but more than just being art, it's functional art, my favorite kind. These are two of my favorite guitars I've ever seen or played. The red one in particular is my favorite guitar ever. I bought this guitar over 10 years ago, and while I've played many guitars that are close, I've never played anything better. They're sold under the brand name of Edwards, built by ESP for the Japanese market only. Starting at the gorgeous quilted maple top, surrounded by an abalone binding and a white binding. The binding travels up the neck to the amazing ebony fretboard. The Tree of Life inlay work is second to none. The vine of the tree is mother of pearl and the flowers are abalone. It's some of the most amazing inlay work I've ever seen. Again, the binding continues up to the headstock where we're greeted by more quilted maple, gold goto tuners, and a mother of pearl Edwards logo. This guitar features 27 frets. Yep, you heard me right, 27 frets. That's three more than your standard ESP or Jackson, and five more than a Les Paul. It also has a set of Seymour Duncan pickups, a Floyd Rose, a seven piece neck consisting of maple and walnut that travels from the strap button all the way to the tip of the headstock. It really is one of the nicest guitars I've ever played. ESP, Jackson, and Ibanez are my favorite Japanese-built guitars. In the 80s, they were the best shred guitars, and you could still buy Japanese guitars from that era pretty affordably today, the Stealth Kelly being one of them, but they need a ton of work to be brought back to life. Sometimes I buy beat-up guitars to rebuild, and sometimes people send me their guitars to rebuild. The guitars behind me are a mix of both of those. These are the next batch of guitars to rebuild, and a couple of them are from Japan. This here is a 1996 Jackson Kelly KE3 with a flame maple top. I love maple tops, but the body of this guitar is gonna need a lot of repairing. After I fill all the chips and dings, I'm gonna sand it down. The maple top on this guitar is actually a really thin veneer. It would need a ton of sanding to get it down to its natural color again. And by that time, we'd probably already be sanding through the veneer. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to paint right over it. The body of this guitar is made out of poplar. The neck is a maple neck with a rosewood fretboard. This Japanese-built guitar has 24 frets and Jackson's famous shark fin inlays. After building the Stealth Kelly, I've wanted to do more Kellys, and I saw this one come up, and I had to get it. When set up right, these 90s Japanese Jacksons were amazing guitars. I got this guitar so cheap because if you look, it's pretty trashed. The bridge has mismatched parts, there's a giant screw just filling one of the holes, there's extra holes drilled in the body, the pickup ring is trashed, there's no neck pickup, and the body's got a lot of repairs needed. I'll certainly have my hands full repairing this one and getting it back to normal, but that's the name of the game. When I'm done with this thing, we're gonna have a grade A shred machine on our hands. This is an Ibanez RG350 MDX. It's a 2010 model and it was built in Indonesia. It was sent in by a fan of the show, Ben, to have it overhauled. This is Ben's first guitar from when he was 16 years old, and it was sitting unplayed for years, so he wanted to give it some new life. This guitar features a basswood body with bolt-on construction. It has three pickups, humbucker, single coil, and a humbucker. The neck and fretboard are maple with a Wizard 2 profile. It's got 24 frets and shark tooth inlays. The RG series from Ibanez is probably their most popular model, played by a ton of pros with a ton of different models of them out there at all different price ranges. This guitar here is an early 80s Ibanez Proline Flying V. This is another one that was sent to me from a fan of the show who thought it would be a great project for me. Although he didn't want me to rebuild it for him, he wanted to sell it to me. If you've watched this show for long enough, you know that I'm a sucker for buying guitars, especially ones like this with a ton of potential that I can rebuild. The guy had bought this guitar to rebuild himself and just never got around to it. It had been sitting there for a couple years in a case at his house. He saw the show and thought that this would be a great project for me to do. 
I'd never even seen this model before, but after looking it up, I agree with them. I love doing my own custom builds, but doing custom builds for other people is a lot of fun too because it takes me out of my comfort zone. It gets me working on guitars I probably wouldn't have bought myself and incorporating their style into it. So this one's kind of a best of both worlds for me, and it's got me thinking outside the box. All right, it's time to get started on these guitars. So I wanted to say thanks so much for your guys' continued support, sharing the show on your social media, and letting people know about the show. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, hit the notification bell so you're notified every Thursday when a new episode comes out, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you like about this episode. I've had so many cool guitars to work on lately that I've hired a helper. So let's head out to the shop and I'll introduce you to him. This is Ryan. He's a mechanic, a machinist, and just a builder by trade. He rides skateboards, mountain bikes, and Harley Davidsons. Ryan's actually the man behind the Guitar Guts wall mounts, the insane 14 guitar rack that I have, and I recently hired him to help me build guitar cases. He does great work, better than me in many cases. As more and more people have been sending me their guitars to rebuild, I needed a little extra help. So Ryan's been helping me with the disassembly, and the initial sanding of the guitars. And now let's get into these builds. I have the piece, we can glue it back on there at least. It's yeah, it's really weird. This one's got like a lot of weird stuff about it that, you know, that's the whole point of these guitars is that we could fix all this stuff and make this into like a killer shred machine. But look at all these chips and dings along this whole edge. This one's perfect candidate though for what I like to do. I think this one's gonna go crackle. Oh. It's gonna be the first crackle. That's gonna be sweet. For the last couple weeks, I've been experimenting with a new type of paint called Crackle. Crackle's not anything new. It's been around for a long time, but it's new to me. I've never done it. And I have a couple tester guitars out there that I've been testing some things on. And the way that it works is that you spray on different color paints, then you let them dry for a little bit, and you spray on this special Crackle paint. And the Crackle paint comes in different colors too. I'll be using black Crackle, but it sits on top of the paint and then it tightens up way different than normal paint and creates these really cool lightning, barbed wire looking cracks throughout the whole surface of the guitar. And then the colors that you painted on before the crackle start to come up through the color that's on top. So if you spray on you know, red paint and then spray on black crackle on top of that, as the black crackle starts to shrink, the red paint starts to come through with these really cool designs. So I don't know exactly what color, I'm thinking probably black and red, some type of like, you know, liquid magma, orange, burst, red, maybe like the same kind of colors as the Tiger Roads, mm. orange and red. It's a good contrast. They drilled a hole right there for the volume. They could have just put the volume there. Maybe this guy didn't like where the volume was. Maybe it was like hitting his finger, which I could see that actually now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, this guitar is pretty beat up and trashed and I'm thinking, you know, original Floyd Rose on it, a set of EMG pickups, um, maybe probably the 8160 set and all black hardware. That'll be one of the ones we're starting on right now. You could take that thing, strip it down, take all the parts off that. We're going to repaint the headstock with that one too. Okay. Sand the body, um, definitely replacing that bridge and these pickups. Pretty much all the parts or everything that can come off this thing is going to be replaced. Now that Ryan has the game plan down for this guitar, I'll hand it off to him where he carefully disassembles it. Taking apart these guitars, there's always all kinds of fun surprises that you find inside. Like this output jack is just completely corroded inside, even underneath the knob here on the potentiometer, it's just completely green and corroded. After the guitar is fully disassembled, all the parts will go into a bag that's labeled for this guitar and goes onto the parts shelf. When you're working on a ton of different projects, it's always really important to keep the parts organized. We also found that most of the tuners had broke. Just cheap die cast metal and yeah, when we took them out of the headstock, they were all cracked like this. There was no plan to use these ones anyways. Like I said, anything that can come off this guitar is gonna be replaced and it's probably all gonna be with black hardware anyways. Working on old beat up guitars, you find a lot of weird things like this. This potentiometer was so badly corroded that the nut just would not come off. So we had to use a Dremel to cut the nut off and remove the pot. I'll be honest, I never really ran into this problem before, but it's no big deal when you have the right tools on hand to do the job. It would be a huge headache if we didn't have the right tools though, if this is the thing that held up the job. 
After disassembling the guitar, we take it outside and sand it down. Nothing special going on here, just using a palm sander and some 600 grit sandpaper. Similar to the Jackson Rhodes models that I've done, this guitar has a lot of beveling on the edges, so you have to go through pretty carefully and make sure you don't knock down the edges too hard and keep the original shape of the guitar intact. Much of the guitar is flat, but then when it comes to these bevels, you gotta spend some time really doing this right. A question I get a lot about refinishing guitars is what's the best way to get the paint off? Well, the truth is you don't really need to get the paint off. I hate using chemical paint stripper. It's just messy and super toxic. And to sand this guitar down to wood would take forever. What paint needs for a good bond is a nice roughed up surface. So if you're painting over a good factory paint job, you really just need to scuff it up with some 600 grit sandpaper and then the new paint is gonna hold fine. Just make sure you get all the low spots, there's no shine left on it. You really get it scuffed up really well so paint's gonna have a mechanical bond. Can't forget the headstock too. We're gonna color match the headstock on this guitar so of course, we're sanding this one down and refinishing it. You may remember this guitar had a big ugly screw where the original volume was and the volume was moved to this really strange place in between the selector switch and the volume. It's not centered and it's not even in line. So we're gonna fill that hole using a bandsaw and a 3 8 inch dowel. I'll be able to just plug this right into that hole. Fits perfect. It's gonna need a little bit of Bondo just to get it perfectly flat. So this is just step one. Now I'll go over the guitar real slow with some Bondo and fill all the chips and dings, all the imperfections in the body. The headstock didn't need much repair, so I'm just gonna lay down a base coat or two of some orange paint. And now after letting the Bondo set, it's time to sand it all level. When a guitar has this many imperfections, it's almost impossible to get them all on the first pass. So after I Bondo it and sand it, I'll give the guitar body its first base coats. For a lot of my color coats, I use Rust-Oleum 2X. It's a paint and primer in one. So in this case, I'm using it as a primer so I can get it all uniform in one color and it's a lot easier to tell if there's gonna be anything else I need to do repair-wise on this guitar. There was a couple more spots. I put some Bondo on them, sanded it level, and now it's ready for paint. We'll start by painting the headstock. I'm putting some red on in the center, and then we're gonna have some orange on the sides. Like I was saying, I want this to have a real lava feel to it. So orange and red are gonna be the main colors. Since this guitar is gonna have the crackle effect over this paint, I wanna kinda blend the orange and red together so it fades back and forth randomly all over the guitar. Then once the crackle goes on, the lines in the crackle that are orange and red are gonna be fading back and forth, and I'm thinking it's gonna make a really cool lava type effect. I'll do three coats of regular paint, both colors back and forth like this, each coat with about 10 minutes in between. If you ever read the instructions on an aerosol spray can, it'll say recoat within 15 minutes or after 24 hours. The reason it says that is because the paint starts to dry in about 10 minutes. But you wanna put your next coats on before it dries so that the paint can chemically bond. Once you go past the 10 to 15 minute range, the paint starts to dry a little too much and it's gonna sit on top of paint that's curing at a different rate than the top coats. By 24 hours, it's mostly cured, so you can always paint over it again in 24 hours. When it comes to painting, there's a million little things like this to learn about, which makes it a big challenge for most people. Okay, I think this looks awesome. Once the crackle's on, this is gonna look amazing. I mean, it already looks pretty cool as it is, but once the crackle's on, it's gonna be even cooler. All right, and now it's time for the magic, the crackle paint. I'm still getting the hang of this crackle paint, but the heavier you lay it on, the more intense the crackling is gonna be. You wanna lay it on almost so thick that it's gonna start running. It only takes a few minutes and you can already see the crackling start to take place. It can sometimes take 30 to 40 minutes for the full crackle to come through, but you can see in this sped up clip how it's looking. After about an hour, this is what we have. Now that looks wicked. The plan worked perfectly as far as the orange and red went. It fades back and forth seamlessly with a very clean burst. This is pretty much exactly what I was going for with the lava look. one of the most wild guitars I've ever made. 
Be sure to tune in next week to see how this guitar turns out. I've got a ton of insane projects coming up. We're just getting started over here. Next week, we're going to finish up the color coats on this thing and then throw down the crackle. Then, of course, we're going to throw a real heavy clear coat over this one. We'll also get back to the black Ibanez RG, the Ibanez Proline Flying V, and don't forget, still lurking in the background is the Jackson Roswell and the other Jackson Rhodes I've been working on. Plus, I've recently received a wave of customer guitars coming in. Each one, super custom and super awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Be sure to hit the bell to be notified every Thursday when a new episode comes out. And if you want to see some behind the scenes on this show, check out my Sunday show, Sunday Morning Shred. It's a slower paced show where I do Q&As and talk about behind the scenes stuff for this show as well as what guitars have come in and what guitars are going out this week. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think of that crackle. And if you want your guitar featured on the show, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com and let's talk about your dream guitar. If you want to buy one of the guitars on the show, check out guitarguts.com and look at the guitars for sale section right at the top. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon. Rock on my friends.